Good morning and welcome to the Museum of Cornish Life. My name is Isabel and this morning I'm going to show you how to make a thaumatrope. I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. Now you might ask, what is a thaumatrope? Well, it's basically a trick. It's a way to trick the eye into seeing two things appear as though they're one thing. And it's a really early form of making images move or animate. And of course this week we're looking at animation. So it's a Victorian invention. Um, I had a look at where the word thaumatrope comes from, and it comes from the Greek, and it roughly translates into wonder turner, which I quite like, because in fact you do have to turn something to make it work. Um, it was invented in 1827. It's credited to a gentleman called John Ayrton Paris, who actually has a very interesting link to Cornwall, I discovered. Um, he came to Cornwall in 1824 and wrote a book, it was a guide to the Mounts Bay and the Lizard area. He was very interested, and he was a physician, and he was very interested in looking at what was happening with mining accidents and explosives, and he gave quite a few lectures to the Royal Geographical Society of Cornwall. So I like the fact that this thaumatrope was invented by a gentleman who had strong links to Cornwall, because of course we're here in the Museum of Cornish Life. Um, he put it into his book in 1827, and it was a book that was an educational book for children, so that's why it's credited to him. Now, I know that some of you amongst you will be going, oh, I thought, I thought it was William, H it was uh, Herschel who invented it. Well, yes, maybe it was. He did spin a coin, and he realised that you could see both the faces at once. Um, and other people, such as Charles Babbage, also had a similar idea around the same time. But we are going to credit it to John Ayrton. Uh, Paris um, because he put it in the book for the first time so everybody could do it. Um, so, and this is what we're talking about. Basically we're talking about two pieces of cards that have a design on them. On one side, little birdie, this is the classic one, on the other side in a cage. Now, you might have noticed that actually one is the right way round and one is upside down. We've got two holes on either side and, and two bits of string. So when you spin it, and hopefully I've got this going fast enough, what should happen is that your eyes suddenly see the birdie appear in the cage, which is really brilliant. I love this, I could do this all day. Now, I'm going to show you how to make your own, and it's really quick and easy. First of all, all you need are two circles. If, like me, you're not good at drawing a circle freehand on any paper, okay? Um, thick paper but it doesn't have to be card or anything like that in fact paper that you can see through is quite handy and I'll show you why in a minute but two bits of paper if you can't find any if you're not good at drawing circles find something to draw around like a cup or a beaker and let's face it we've all got these in our house at the moment haven't we they make a really good circle get your two circles and decide what you want your design to be or what you want to happen when you spin your strings I've decided I'm going to try and get a penguin into a snow globe Okay, because it's been a little bit chilly, so I'm still feeling quite penguiny at the moment. Okay, so draw your snow globe on one and your penguin on the other. And this is why having paper that's a little bit see-through is quite useful, because you need to put the two together, but you need to remember to put one upside down. And when you look through, I can just about see my penguin through. So then I'm going to stick them together with a little bit of glue and... I'm going to put a little dab of glue on there, shove it on, glue, 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 okay, and then I would recommend once, you recommend, once you've got your design, you then put your holes in. If you put your holes in first, you've got to line them up and get that right, it does, that doesn't always work brilliantly, I've discovered, okay. Then all you need is two bits of string. You could use ribbon, any kind of string will do. I've just got this natural colour string, because it's nice and cheap. And all you do is you tie a knot. Whoops. There we go. One in that side, and one in this side. Lovely. Tie a knot. Hopefully I've tied the knot tight enough. There we go. So now I have snow globe on one side, upside peng down penguin on the other. And when I spin them, hopefully the snow globe and the penguin are going to line up. Okay. 
Now, this is kind of the traditional way that you have a circle like this. You have your holes on either side of the sides and two bits of string. But you can experiment and try different things. And you can try any design that you like. The Victorians were brilliant at this. They had all kinds of things. They had words appearing on either side, little phrases, things jumping up and down. So have an experiment. What I would say is before you do your sticking together, you might want to check that you've got it lined up properly and that you've got it the right way round. So you can always put your holes in and put your string through and clip it together with paper clips and then experiment to make sure it's working properly. This is one I quite like as well. This is one where you put the holes at the top and the bottom. And I did this for Valentine's Day. So hopefully it will now say, I love you like that. And you'll notice that because I've got um, the holes at the top and the bottom, I've got the writing the right way round and I've also got the heart the right way round. Okay? And that's what I discovered when I did it this way around that I had to keep them the same way. But there's another way you can make your former trope. You can make it with two bits of paper and a pencil. You don't even need string and a bit of sellotape. I quite like this one. This one is fish in bowl. Again, a classic. So I'll wiggle it round. Hopefully you can see the little fishy suddenly appears in the bowl. Which is the one I like a lot. And um, to do this, all you do is you get, again, two bits of paper, but this time what you do is you make sure that they are the same way round. So I've got a little flower on that side and butterflies on that side. Put a little bit of, where's my glue gone? There it is, glue at the top, but don't glue the bottom because what you then need to do is get a pencil or a stick and you need to sellotape that on. I did pre-prepare my sellotape this morning. So put a little bit on like that, push it down. Okay, so it's nice and tight. Hopefully this one's gonna work. I haven't tried this one quite so much. So hopefully now you should have the flower and the butterflies appearing in the same place, which is quite sweet. I like that one. Um, and if like me, you're looking towards uh, the days getting longer and lighter and the sunshine coming back, you might want to have a go at making your own paradise. So I've done some palm trees and um, that's a hammock, although my colleague assures me it looks like a pea pod, but it is a hammock. Um, and this is a big one. And I'm gonna wiggle this one and hopefully now, oh, look at that bliss. Hammock between palm trees in a lovely sunny place. So I hope you have lots of fun making your own thermotropes. Um, maybe today you might want to have a go at making one that's a pancake that's going into a frying pan because it is pancake day. Um, early form of animation, very first sort, and as the week goes on, we're going to show you other ways to make other forms of animation. And also, if you want a guide to how to make this one, which is the classic one, have a look on our website and there's a worksheet there for you. Thank you.